It's time to get excited about what we're about to move to. There's so many new Microsoft products that you're gonna see in the next hour that you're gonna say, oh yeah, a lot. And if you're wearing socks right now, could you do me a favor? Could you pull them up? Because we're about to knock them down. Are you? Let's get out there. I introduce to you the latest Microsoft mantra. What doesn't kill you makes you Well, good, here we are. Can you imagine we're already in? We only have one day left. Let's make the best of it, I can't imagine. So as you've been seeing great things this entire conference, I bet you're leading in with a little hesitation. It's like, you know, this is almost overwhelmed. How many have felt a little overwhelmed during this week, yes? And I, I want to get you not to hesitate to move forward. You know, our students sign up for our classes to learn new technology. The latest, the greatest. Please understand as you're sitting in sessions that our students are in what I call a time warp. I mean by that is that they might not hit the professional world for two, four, ten <laughs> years. And if we're teaching them anything dated, I think that progression even gets more so. So as you look at all this, remember, don't hesitate. So many new things. the idea. I want to start out with an image. It was actually has, was the 2013 World Press Award of the best photo taken in 2013. It's in Djibouti. What is happening here is people are holding cell phones up at the border of Somalia to get signal late at night. If they are caught, they will be killed. They're trying to get a signal to connect to their families, the world around them. They're in extreme poverty. They want to move forward. They want to connect. Something that we think we all take advantage of. We have a phone sitting right there. But is it really that great of a stretch to say this? Our students are reaching out through our classes they're reaching out of poverty very often, at least my students. They're taking our class so that they can move forward, to have new opportunities. And so often, when I saw this photo, it just moved me because people are risking so much. Do you know our students work endless, tiring jobs, some of them? They have three kids and they're a single mom and trying to make it work but yet they're really trying to make an effort. I have to also mention happy birthday, Internet. We all might have heard yesterday was the 25th anniversary of the Internet. So everybody real quick, say happy birthday. And let's face it, we would not be here today without that invention. My focus today is Microsoft. As they move forward, there's been a lot of changes and I think a lot of positive changes. Just recently, there is a new CEO in the helm, taking a new direction. His name is Satya Nadella. Everyone say that because you should know it. Satya Nadella. He is in, from India originally. He's worked with Microsoft for many years in the cloud and into the business side. And now as a CEO, whatever he's saying, and we should be watching this direction, because clearly as we teach this software, it does affect us. So let me tell, let 
Mr. Nadella tell you what he finds important today? Now, going forward, uh, it's a mobile-first, cloud-first world. Uh, in other words, everything is becoming digital um, and software-driven. And so I think of the opportunities being unbounded. Um, and we need to be able to pick the unique contribution that we want to bring. And that's where our heritage of being, having been the productivity company to now being the do more company where we get every individual and every organization to get more out of every moment of their life uh, is what we want to get focused on. So clearly, this cloud is not going to go away anytime soon. It is the vestment moving forward in every direction. So let's start with Microsoft Office. 365 is a game changer, but how do we get started? My situation is this. I teach at Central Virginia Community College in Lynchburg, Virginia. This is my 28th year. No one do the math, please. <laughs> start to have to carry numbers, mm, no. But our college, almost a year ago, last summer, went to the new office, Windows 8, and so forth. And let me tell you all the things that I wish I had known then to help you along your journey if you're not already there. First of all, as of December 1st, as David kindly shared with us, well done, kind sir, Office 365 is now available for free, but how do you do that? So let me kind of take you through that process to start with. I went to my IT director in November and said, you know, I hear this program is coming out in December. I would love the opportunity to get all my students could have the same software that I'm teaching with. Everybody give me an oh yeah on that one. <laughs> and I want not only my rich students who always have everything, I want all my students of different levels to be able to have all of the same stuff. So this was really exciting to me. My IT director's first response was, I hope he's watching live stream right now, I think you misunderstood Corinne. <laughs> they can't be giving it away for free. And I think you might get that same response when you go back. So I want you to take number one, step one in this process. I want you to go to office365.com forward slash education. If you want to look right now and you scroll down to the bottom, you will see something called Office 365 Student Advantage. As David stated earlier, all you simply need to do is if you're already going to the newest office, Pro Plus or Professional Plus, then your IT director, he or she, each semester can upload a database file of your student email addresses. What that does is authenticate that the student is a registered student, K-12, college and university and career schools. That authentication, Microsoft then will return, put those names up in their database for Office 365, and provide your state, your system, whatever level that you are buying in with, a login. Let me show you mine. So, at my college website, I'll go there live right now. Here we are at my college, CVCC, Central Virginia Community College. And if you look over here in the bottom right hand corner, it says Microsoft Office 365 Student Advantage. When any of my students in my state click on the Student Advantage, it gives them, this was something that the Microsoft Office Student Advantage program gave us as a listing of what we should tell students, what are the requirements to use Office 2013 or 365. The student needs Windows 7, a flavor of Windows 8, or Mac 10.5.x or higher. We don't want to have a student do a download that doesn't work for them. They get to put it on five different computers within their world. So they could have it on mom's house this week, dad's house this weekend, grandma's on Tuesdays. <laughs> so we can have all those pieces and parts. So now when my students click on our customized link from Microsoft, they can have this download. Is that making a little more sense? So now we can see, and these are fully installed, 
full product. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, Outlook, OneNote, and even programs such as Link, L-Y-N-C, which is a communications product that's very much like a video webinar, very well done, by the way. So you can have all of these products put together, and what we want to do here with this is so on the very first day, I have every one of my students get connected to the software. And think about it. The very first day, here's what used to happen in my class. Professor, what, uh, we need software? Well, where do I get this software? By the way, we used to put it on CDs. Last summer, it was hilarious. My students would go like, oh, like, I have this CD, but like my computer like doesn't, I don't know where to stick it. <laughs> Where should I stick it? <laughs> Never ask anyone that question. <laughs> Computers today are not sold typically with a CD or DVD-ROM. So now to have this download makes sense to me, and the five installs, if one of their computers is no longer working, they can move that particular license. And they get to keep the product until they graduate or stop attending your college. What will happen? The semester that they're no longer a student, they have to, once a semester, authenticate through the internet. They can go over to McDonald's real quick. It then notices that they're no longer a registered student because of the upload that semester, and they'll no longer be able to use the Microsoft Office products for free. Of course, there's various products for purchase that I'm sure David can share with you later. <laughs> um, now, as far as their cloud, it was called a SkyDrive. It's now called a OneDrive. And with the OneDrive, they'll be able to keep the content or their online portfolio of everything they've learned throughout their college years. They do not lose that. So recently, you've probably heard of the SkyDrive. What I'm having my students do the very first day in class, as soon as they show up, I have the students log in to their SkyDrive. Now it's called OneDrive. You say, why the name? Of change name. There was a little lawsuit, Europe, hmm, we'll go move on. But now it's named OneDrive instead. So when I have my students open any of the Office products 2013 or 365, the very first item that every one of my students do is they come up in the right hand corner and up to then it's usually a generic login on the screen for the student. They now come down to switch account and they can put their OneDrive account, also called a Microsoft account, address here. If the student does not have one, they can simply go to Outlook.com and create that. So here's my first week assignment. I need you to go to Outlook.com. Even in our Shelley Cashman book, we actually have assignments that have the students do this. Create it. I want you to make yourself a Word folder in your cloud, an Excel folder, an Outlook folder, any of the topics she'll be covering. Get that all ready. They can even upload their photo. Do you all notice my photo in the upper right hand corner? And I love this in a traditional class. I can now walk up to a student and go, oh yes, your name is Ralph. <laughs> you know how those first weeks names become a little bit of a challenge. So everybody is named. It's like a built-in name tag right there. We have gotten rid of USB drives on campus. The reason is we're having so many issues with lost USB drives, viruses, and so forth. We are fully cloud, and instead of it being a definition in a textbook, we're using it for real, and that's what students need today, is that real online experience with a business world who's fully using the cloud. So the word OneDrive, well, let me show you. Your life is out there. Your signature dish, your best friend, your first solo, your novel, your years of dedication. But your life is spread across your phone, tablet, anywhere you store those special memories. What if there were a way to bring everything together in one place? One place that's available on the things you use every day. 
one place you can share with the people you choose. One place that goes and grows with you. So that what matters is safe and within reach. That's OneDrive. The one place for all your photos, videos, and documents. The one place for everything in your life. So everything I've discussed is what you should be saying that first day of class. Get students ready to understand. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. <laughs> Yeah, it's on the syllabus, right? <laughs> no, but take the time to really kind of go through this because don't forget, as you're right now feeling, oh my goodness, this is such a new way of doing things, please understand your students have that expanded. So make sure that we're really clear as we move through. Microsoft has also had a little bit of a name change. We used to call them Microsoft Office Web Apps. What a web app is, is you can go to Outlook.com and not only create it, a free account, but you can also get a lightweight version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Uh, Microsoft has rebranded this, so now don't call them web apps anymore. The new term is Office Online, say it. And what I'm referring to, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before, is I'm at the website Outlook.com, simply click Sign In, and what I can do right here is see my Microsoft email account. But notice at the top left right here, let me click there again so you can see that. Look where my mouse is in the upper left-hand corner. I can click right there and notice the new expanded Microsoft Office Online. This took place about two weeks ago. So there's a whole new look. Notice it doesn't say SkyDrive. What does it say? And for example, if I go into my OneDrive, this is where I have the students create folders, and I have them store their files here, and now our students will have Office through the new Student Advantage program throughout their entire collegiate experience. That's so much better than getting 180 days that get cut off, and, and the student doesn't get to use it for the rest of their classes. Just recently, they even added, added a new feature called Create Excel Survey. If you need to take a quick campus survey or maybe you're working on your PhD degree, you can quickly send out a survey that automatically fills in Excel columns with your results, all built in. This is not the full version of Office. If you notice, it does not have full access. It does actually have more features than Google Docs for free, which is nice. But please don't think this would be a good place to teach your entire course. It does not have the full level that the full product would have. And now that our students get it for free, we should be in the full product, obviously. In addition to Office Online, something happened last week. And I know this was a worry of yours. You say, what happens when things are updated? Well, last week, Office 2013 Service Pack 1 was released. Now, if you're on Office 365, although they're the same item right now on the PC, there's no need to download this Service Pack 1 because Office 365, by default, updates all the new items. But if you're using Office 2013, you'll need to do a manual Service Pack update if you don't have any of your settings set to pull this in automatically. You say, where would I find this? If you just search for Office 2013 SP1, you'll see it at the Microsoft site without any issues. Now, what, were, what was in this change? If you really look at these, these are not changing any of your ribbons, your main features at all. What we have seen in this new service pack is more compatibility with Windows 8.1. Of course, Internet Explorer 11 recently hit the market as well. A different, um, better touchpad working with. But one of the most exciting things is they have more content apps for PowerPoint. Well, let me show you. So in PowerPoint today, I can go to the Insert tab. And this has always been there. Do you see where it says in the Apps group something called Apps for Office? 
they have some new apps. For example, there's now something called Maps for Office, and you can actually type in a location like Nashville, and I can get a road map, satellite map, hybrid, any of the above, and I can put these directly into my document to put it in to my PowerPoint slides, for example. So what we're seeing is more content apps. Let me show you another one that they added. I'm sure you've all heard of, I, I uh, have created it over the years, but one of the new things that they have put as a content app into PowerPoint is Poll Everywhere. Do you all remember that program? I, I know there's a PollEverywhere.com site. I'm not referring to that. I'm talking about a built-in app that you can put directly, and this was with Service Pack 1. Uh, let's try it just to show you. So notice I have put into my le next slide in a moment, this is not coming from a website, PollEverywhere.com. It's coming from the PowerPoint Office app called Poll Everywhere. Well, let's just try it real quick. Everybody pull out your phones, uh, smartphones. Even if you have a flip phone and you can call back to the 90s, you're in. <laughs> Yay, yeah, <hey>, join me. <laughs> so let's just try it out. We are live in an Office app in PowerPoint right now. It says, hey, when did you begin teaching Office 2013? or 365, if you've already been teaching it since fall, spring, summer, fall, or no plans yet, how do you do this? Just grab your phone, and I want you to text the code. In other words, here's, pick text message, everybody. Type in these five digits, 37607. So in other words, that's the phone number. I know it's too short, but we're gonna go with it. Then go to the body of the message, and I want you to type in this six-digit number that refers to you. So we can kind of see where everyone's at in our audience here. You are limited, oh, to 200 people responding, so the first 200 to make my screen today will be in very good shape. So let's see how the numbers are coming out. Wow, a lot of people have been using it all year long. How is it working for those who are using it? Oh, yeah? Oh yeah, so good to know. Very solid product, but we can kind of see the numbers. Keep voting because we still don't have all of you up here. So wouldn't that be cool in a class that you can have this live update? I am in a PowerPoint slide right now. So how cool is that? Oh yeah. Again, how did I do that? Insert tab, I go to the Office Apps, and this one is called Poll Everywhere, but Microsoft has a great selection of third-party apps, uh, about 100 right now, and it's growing every day. And that was one of the new additions was a Service Pack 1. Do you see how that does not directly affect your layout of your book or teaching, but there's more features being added behind the scenes if you would. Hey, look at those numbers, that's pretty cool. Oh, it went past 200, so there we go. I hadn't tested it beyond there. We'll come back to that. So, now, which app should you add to your class and how should you do it? It's kind of like shopping for a dog. You always have to pick out the right one. <laughs> They're all so cute. But, just like Microsoft and everybody else, you gotta mark it. As far as office certifications go, I've already been certified in all the Office 2013 products. 
that exam has been available for the last eight months. So up and ready, ready to go. And as Office 365 updates itself over time, from what I understand is that those features will not be tested on for at least a year after they're released so that you wouldn't be asked something that just showed up yesterday. So as we move forward with all of this, I've got some exciting news. Um, David, could you close your ears right now? <laughs> I, this is exciting to me. Um, this is for real. Microsoft has it under their hat, but we should be seeing uh, in the late spring, early summer, so what does that equate to? In May or June, most likely, rumor has it, that we will finally see the iPad release of Microsoft Office 365 put as an app. Give me an oh yeah. Now, the question is here, we know that we won't see the absolute full product. What I mean by that is we will not see products such as Access and so forth. We will see Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, and we'll have to see to what uh, it will have a little bit different look. Uh, can't show that to you just yet, but we'll have to see it's, if it's full functionality to what extent. We understand that it probably won't be full functionality, but it will have a lot of pieces that the students could work on some of their assignments on their iPad. We're seeing an iPad 12 inch device, and if you think about of a 12 inch device, will also be coming out later this fall. So maybe we'll see some iPads being used a little bit more in business, and maybe just not in that, what I consider the entertainment sector. And using Office on it will be great as well. Microsoft also has, and I want to talk to the two schools in the room who have an endless budget. Mark Frydenberg, where are you? Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, he teaches at Bentley. They uh, seem to have a little cash. But for the rest of us, this might be out of our boundaries. But if you watch maybe Fox News, the Today Show, which I'm a big fan, or any of your news shows, you've probably seen this on air. Microsoft has released something called the Perceptive Pixel. It's a touch device. It is either an 82-inch diagonal, basically it looks like a television, but it's really a display unit, or a 55-inch touch. And just in case you're building with an endless budget, you would see teachers now able to show PowerPoint. And I have to tell you, I like this much better than the smart board. It is not cheap, and I'll just leave it there. You would have to contact a Microsoft representative to figure out what price they might offer you. But at least you've heard of perceptive pixel device anymore. So pretty exciting that it works very well with Office. You know, so what's the next step? Well, we're heading to Office. We're checking everything out. We want to make sure we don't have any mistakes here, though. Good girl, Phoebe. Nice and calm today. Oh no. Karen, uh, oh. Karen, I've got a cat with no pulse here. I need adrenaline and an IV line. Quick as you can, please. See you tomorrow. <laughs> we don't want to have any mistakes. And by the way, tonight's going to be chilly. This is said from my mother. A little cold outside. Wear a coat. <laughs> So, you know, students are really into technology today. You know, they breathe it, think it, it's part of their whole environment. So what's happening on the Windows side of the house, Karen? Well, there's a big date coming up that you should be very much aware of. On April 8th, boy, that's less than a month away, Windows 8.1 Update 1 is released. So if you bought a new computer after that date, most likely the OEM would include that. Or you can, for free, update through the Microsoft Store if you're already using a Windows 8 flavor. So what should we know? Well, the most important information is on my next slide. Please write this down. A lot of our schools have stayed on Windows 7. IT department saw Windows 8 and went, mm, not sure, a little bit different. Let's just stay put. Well, if you look closely at those dates, this is not an oh yeah, this is an uh-oh. Everybody say uh-oh. <laughs> so let me explain the terminology here. Windows 7 is ending its full main, 
mainstream support life cycle. Now there is full mainstream and partial support. There's two layers here to be explained. So what does it mean for it to lose its full mainstream support? That means there's not going to be the traditional bug fixes, any enhancements, anything to deal with any of the new inventions or new devices necessarily coming out. So your computer will still live on January 14th, 2015, but it's kind of not at the full status anymore. And a lot of businesses and colleges and universities, security-wise, bug-wise, all the extra work that would maintain, it's really not a good plan to continue on a product that's not at full mainstream support status. Uh, about a, a year and a half later, we'll see the partial support end as well that will start at that point. So because of this date, a lot of businesses, a lot of our colleges are going, wow, by the time we come back to another great Cengage conference next March, the full mainstream support will be over. So with that in mind, as you're starting to look at your schools, you may want to check out Windows 8 a little bit because clearly this is where it is. You know, the problem is right now is the only operating system you can buy in a store like Best Buy or Staples obviously is going to have on the PC side a flavor of Windows 8, most likely 8.1. So it's really kind of difficult still teaching Windows 7 when the students are staring at it going, this does not look like mine. And you can't even really buy a Windows 7 computer at least without a little uh, eBay invention there as you move along. So let me tell you about this update coming out right in April, correct? Remember? What's it called? Windows 8.1 Update 1. So Microsoft is really looking at the user experience. And they've kind of decided that, you know, the touch experience, it works very, very well. But what about if someone's not on the touch experience? They're using keyboard, mouse, it works fine. But could we make that a little bit easier? So in a sympathetic tone, I'm sure, they want to make sure we're helping everybody here. So everybody look up to the right of my name on the start screen. Do you see two new button devices that we will see? Everybody, this is a search. So you, don't, you have the search charm and this addition, and you also have power. I had a student come to me recently and said, I have 200 windows open and I have a 12-hour battery, and I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> I don't want to wait till tomorrow. So very easy, they'll be able to search. This kind of feels a little bit like a start button, but of course not completely. Notice also, if I right-click on an app right here, I'm now given some choices. So I won't have to know the special tug or something if I'm not using a touch device. What else are we seeing? For example, when you have any app open, I actually have the Bing News app open right now. And you'll notice that on the left, I can close, minimize, split by now just hovering, right clicking, more control that you don't have to know like some of the secret handshakes to move forward. We're also seeing in this, I really do like this, OneDrive seems a lot more integrated in the new Windows 8.1 Update 1 product. So in other words, you can now turn on your sync settings. This is not kitchen sync, but S-Y-N-C. And what this would do is take any file that you indicate and it would automatically sync it from your PC device directly to OneDrive without saving a copy here separately and saving a copy up to OneDrive. Everybody give that a huge, oh yeah. So much better sync. We're also seeing with this, you'll be able to decide how you would like to boot in. You can show more tiles on the start screen or not. You can also boot directly on a non-touch device to directly into what we call the desktop screen, ignoring the start screen if you prefer. You also can now show Windows Store apps on your taskbar. What does that look like? What you're able to do is in your, when you're in the desktop, you'll be able to see the weather, all those different apps as you move along. So some other features, it runs on devices that just have 16 gig of storage. 
That means really, really small devices, really. You only need one gig of RAM now. They've really made that footprint extra small. That also means it is extra fast. Um, a better modern user interface experience if you're a point and click and type PC users. And they've added the search and power buttons as well. Let me show you, I'm in an app right now. I'm actually in the New York Times app, Windows Store app. Notice I am able to call up my taskbar from the desktop. And that integration really makes a lot of sense to me. They're not so separated. You feel connected to all the pieces and parts at all times. So with these changes, we've even seen with the last version, search has been updated. I've got to show you this. One of my favorite things, and this is with the last iteration. Now if you go to search, and let's say you're typing in Galileo. Now if I have a file in here now named Galileo, I actually have the music files. Of course that shows up. But we're seeing more Bing integration. And if I type in Galileo, check it out. It's telling me, wow, do you know he's age 77? I hope they don't get a hold of my name. I don't want my age up there at any given time. <laughs> um, it will then show me pictures, video, written works, websites that have his continuation. So if you type any term into the search term that you do not have files allocations for at all, it will go right out to Bing and help you find that even if it's not on your computer, if it's out on the web included here. So in addition to some of these great new features that are involved, I've got to show you some of my favorite Windows apps. So what do I mean by that? They've really been working hard. And just last year when we were in here, I think we had about 30,000 Windows Store apps. Well, now they're past the quarter of a million, so they're doing very well. But I've got to show you some of my favorite. And a lot of these apps use the camera, use touch. And I have to admit, love all the new touch devices. Well, so I make sure you're all practicing using touch. Yeah. We're definitely in a touch-based world. So I've got some homework for you. Find a watermelon. Let's see how he does. Wow. He's pretty good with touch. Okay, guys, I'm going to give him a C at best. I don't know. Let's see how the nerd goes. game. It is a Windows Store app. It's free. It's called Buggylon. B-U-G-Y-L-O-N. Um, but I need someone to help. Anybody willing to come up and help me? Your hands raise. Let's see. Come up, Tom. Come here. So, I, I know you're not sure what you're in for, but let me show you one of my favorite apps, and this might be a good one to show in class. So I'm going to start Buggylon right here. So let me start that from scratch. There we go. So let me tell you, Tom, what you're in for here? Are you ready for a flight? You're not afraid of flying, right? No. No? So you're going to take a quick trip, well, into the middle of nowhere, not North Carolina. So it turns out where you're heading, there's some big bugs. Ah, kid, you don't like bugs, do you? Love bugs. You're in. Oh, no, the plane did not do well. So you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Let's figure out how he does in Buggy Lawn. So it's going to tell you exactly what to do, Tom. So you're on your own. Where are you from? Durham, North Carolina. North Carolina. Give him an oh yeah. And who, who are you? I'm Tom Murphy. Good. OK, it says, please move to the right, Tom. Move to the left, Tom. OK. Oh, there's bugs. It says you've got to shake your hand. Shake your hand. Now, notice he's not touching my screen at all. You say, how is he getting the bugs? He's swiping them. There he goes. He's smacking, swiping. Good, good, good. You got it? Good, good, good. He's doing pretty well. Shake. 
Keep shaking. There we go. Okay, now time to get the bugs. Tell them go. Come on. Get the bugs. Woo! Got some action going on there, Tom. Nice combo. Woo! Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> Now, how is it working? It's using the camera in a computer device. I have a Dell XPS 12, and it's using a technology kind of born in the Kinect from the Microsoft world. So I think you're doing pretty well. Everybody give them an O, oh, yeah. Pretty good, thank you. Woo! What do you think? What's it called again? Buggy Lawn it is, so you gotta check that out later. So I think you'll have a little fun to show some of your students. Some of the new trip. Hey, one of my other new favorites is all these apps in the App Store. Over a quarter of a million of them. Uh, what a new opportunity. And everything on the start screen is app-based. We're getting away from the traditionally installed program and moving to an app world, just like Android or the iOS would as well. Now, if you're making a, a great, strong app, highly recommend Visual Studio for us, 2012, 2013, same item because we're using the beginning items from that projects. But if you're making a really lightweight app, let me show you there's a new free app available. Maybe you just want to show how to make an app in your class and not have the depth of programming. What we can do right here is just simply type in the word Sienna. This was downloaded from the free Microsoft Store. There's no cost involved. And what Microsoft Project Vienna allows, uh, Sienna allows you to do is you can select, make buttons, make lightweight apps. You could make news rolls and so forth as you go along there. So we can add any of these items. Ah, I think this might work. So we can put anything in there. Oh my goodness, tell me self-promotion, boo hiss, sorry. But you can put in buttons and so forth as you move along and actually create an app. So it doesn't do the heavy duty stuff, but notice over here I can put in text, I can put in videos, music, audio, take camera images. So if you wanna make a lightweight app and you can publish it directly to the Microsoft Store, let's do it. What's it called again? Microsoft Project what? Sienna. So check that out as one of my favorite apps as well. Wow, there's already so many great things in this Microsoft environment. Uh-oh. Does that say nine? Nine? I'm the youngest of nine. I can't say nine, can it? Let me just fill you on on some good, strong rumors. Definitely close your ears on this one, David. So, well, of course, what would possibly be after a Windows 8? Seems like the next number would indeed be nine. So let me kind of tell you strong rumors. Please know that this is not an exact date. What we're looking at is right now Windows 9 is in development. It's called Threshold. Looking possibly at an April 2015 release date. Hey, sign me up to present Windows 9 next year. Got it? So Microsoft's next generation of products, so you have to consider if we're seeing Windows 7 start to lose full authentication there, I think we all need to start realizing it's maybe time to move forward. And I know a lot of it's out of our decisions. We have to start talking to our IT directors, but I don't think they always know the most recent information of what's happening and when. So I would encourage each one of you to send out that little email today and say, hey, what are our plans? Are you aware of the dates that are happening here? Microsoft is really in this version of Windows 9, really considering some pricing concessions for OEM. In other words, making the imprint of Windows 9 a little more reasonably priced so that computer cost is dropped as well. We're kind of seeing the whole mantra in this edition that the Windows and Windows Phone and Xbox platforms would not be so different, that they would all seamlessly have that same kind of feel. Maybe even a Windows 9 phone might even look a lot more like a start screen on a PC. What is rumored? Mm, can't promise you anything, 
but there's been talk of a return of a start button of sorts. Oh, look at that. Never <laughs> oh, yeah. You might be able to run Metro Style apps on the desktop alongside your desktop applications. I know the term Metro is not officially allowed, but I have to tell you they often use it in media, so maybe the next iteration in the design. And what they kind of expect is we probably see, Microsoft does not call them betas, but different milestone releases of Windows 9 getting ready for that final release for those who like to tinker and to explore. But I have to leave you with some thoughts here. We're going to be opening up to Q&A in just a little while, but I want to talk about the new PC. You know, a lot of our students come up to us, especially in those first few weeks, saying, I'm, I need a computer. What should I buy? And I mean, what we used to say years ago and what we say today should be very different. Let me tell you a few of my personal favorites, and probably PC Computing Magazine and others say the same thing. When you first discuss this with your student, please explain what an i3, an i5, and an i7 is. It's an Intel processor. And really, uh, beyond the, the, the different brand name, we want to make sure that they understand what they're buying. So here's the questions I ask my students. So what do you do with a computer? Are you more just into email, checking the web, maybe some light gaming? Does that describe you? If it does, along with Microsoft Office, probably an i3 is a very good fit. i3 Windows 8 computers can start as low as $350. So with touch, by the way. An i5 is a lot of us in the room would be good i5 users. We're a little bit power users. We make web pages. We do some coding. Uh, we do some gaming, so if you're a little bit above that i3 audience, i5 might be a great fit. Now your starting price is typically around $450 to $500. Hey, who's our i7? Okay, you know who's your i7. Look, raise your hand if you're an i7, baby. <laughs> These are my heavy duty geeks. <laughs> if you lived in your parents' basement <laughs> playing games, until yesterday, you are an i7. Sorry. <laughs> but other of us who do heavy graphics rendering, we might do uh, videography, any of those fields, that's definitely an i7. It's a much heavier, beefier computer. Please understand the price has now gone up significantly. You're now looking at $800 and no longer at a pound to two pounds as an i3 and i5 can be. You're now looking kind of in the five to seven pound range. So. We're seeing, very rumored, a Surface Mini tablet may hit or may not. Talk to David. <laughs> and we're seeing other devices that are out there. One of my favorites right now, Asus, has a, an item called a Transformity. Anybody have one in the room? Hold a couple of them up. If you, have, if you walk around with your Transformer, let me show you why this is so cool. You'll be sitting here. All business, and then all fun. Watch very carefully. Oh, this is Monday morning. The Asus Sorry, Transformer Boot Trio, a laptop powered by the Intel Core i7 processor, a tablet with an Intel Atom processor. Asus, we. Um, the Asus uh, Transformer, I just looked up Walmart today, $379, and it comes with Microsoft Office. 
So great touch, great price point, great weight. Uh, another great one, Lenovo Yoga, but this is a lot more expensive, around $1,000. Well, let's check it out. Please turn to page 132 of your textbooks. I'd like you to write down any themes you may notice while you're following along. Turning and turning in the whitening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the innocence of civility is drowned. Good point made. <laughs> And I have to say, this one, Samsung Series 9, is a very nice job for $879. Buddy. Let's check it out. Buddy. Buddy, there you are. Well, come on, let's go. Get a real dog. Oh, it's some ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Oh, girl, stop. You made a friend. That's going too far. Buddy doesn't like that. Buddy doesn't play that game. Get no, Buddy doesn't like get that. It's okay. You can pet him. He's, he's all right. He's, he's friendly. There you go. Come uh, on. Go on, Buddy. He wants to say hello. Creeper. Hi. Oh. Look at you. How do you do? Come on, come on, come on, get the stick. Oh, hi, Mrs. Yang. That's okay. She's a cat person. Get a real computer. Meet the totally innovative, completely authentic Samsung Series 9. Having the real thing is an awesome thing. The Samsung Series 9 is an all-in-one. So really your choices come down to an Ultrabook, maybe a tablet. Both David and I, know, I noticed he has one as well. Maybe an, uh, one that's convertible that does both. I have a Dell XPS 12. So does David, good computer. So, or an all-in-one. The all-in-ones, the computer is in the monitor, so it's one piece, typically anywhere from a 27-inch to a 31-inch diagonal. If your college is looking at an Ultrabook, they could get a good deal for about $400 a computer, typically. And if they're looking at an all-in-one, prices start around $800. The reason I point that out, so often our IT people tell us and administrators we can't afford a new lab anytime soon. I think they're looking at the old budget, where it was $50,000 for a lab of 20 machines. And now when we look at these prices, often a lab of 20 or 25 computers can now equate to eight to $10,000. That's a whole different mindset. Make sure your administrators are aware of your needs. Well guys, as we go to the question time, I think what we do is an inspiration. I think moving forward, cutting edge stuff, so much excitement. What we can do what is, is technology? just magic. What can it do? When I lost my eyesight, I thought that my pain did. New move. Microsoft apps have changed the game. By using your hands, you can actually control your x ray. Technology has the power to unite us. Hang on, honey. Hang on. There he is. You see him? I can see him. It inspires us. Technology has taken us places we've only dreamed. Now I can do whatever I want. It gives hope to the hopeless. Remember the humanity in what we do. <laughs> and it has given voice to the voiceless. Technology is changing lives. Empowering us all. I want you to know that our families are core to all of us. You know, I'm not a new teacher. I know sometimes I want those in the room who are closer to my age. I think we sometimes look at the newer teachers and say, you do the new stuff. I've been teaching 28 years. And I have six children. The bride is not mine, but she is now. My husband, Tim, and my grandson, Liam. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. So what I want you to know is if you're teaching tomorrow and Monday, that it's time to move forward. Just because we're of a certain age doesn't mean we can't do the new stuff and move forward as we move along. So as we get ready for questions here, I encourage everyone to stand a little taller. We have some microphones set up. So if you'd like to close this off with some questions, let's roll. Hi, a question I have is that um, we have a lot of students that enroll late, so yes. I'm often faced with, I have 40 students, 10 of them just enrolled yesterday, so how are they going to get their Microsoft account? So you can add students throughout this semester, just push them up in a database, an additional file. And in Microsoft Word, if you don't want them to update in the middle of the semester, let me just show that. If I go down to the file tab in any of the Microsoft Office products, under the word account, if you're using the 365 product, you can go to the Office updates and disable your updates when you push it out to campus so that they're not being updated all semester long and show the students the same step so that everything that in your course is matching what you're doing in the classroom. So you can push more students to the Office 365 Student Advantage program anytime in the semester, and here's how you turn off those updates. Other questions? Answer. Sorry, that didn't answer my Sorry. question. My, my problem is, is that you said the IT would upload all my students and that would give them the account. But I have a student who just registered this morning in my class, I want them to be, do the work. How do they get the... They can do Office 365 free for 30 days. Anyone on the planet can. And in that 30 days, at least our IT director does a weekly update to push any new names forward. Does that help? Yes. Are you, are you updating on a class-by-class -class basis to Office 365, or do you just push the entire campus population up there? Yeah, so what we did is in the summer of last year, we pushed all of our IT classes up into the new office. And then fall-wise, any computer on campus is now Office 365. But that really comes down to a campus decision, what works best for you. And, but a lot of students want to use this free product at home. They can use it in every class. And I want it to match school. So it might be an idea that you might want to do it campus-wide. Question here? Yes. I noticed that we're running the office online. Yeah, it works. It's supported in all five major browsers, i.e., Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera. So no problem with any of that. Corinne? Question, yes. When the student is done um, and we no longer have them their account through the school, will their OneDrive be switched over to a new account or is it gone forever? No, Microsoft has made the commitment that they are keeping the files that are in the OneDrive so the student can keep them in a lifetime setting, obviously, but they won't have continuation of the program itself without you know, buying a new subscription basis software. Does that help a little bit, everybody, to kind of get what we're doing and how we should be doing it? Question back here. Could you, could you explain the pricing structure? Because it looks like it's per student per month. So student-wise, students are free. So the pricing structure, structure typically for your school, when you go to Office 365 forward slash education, is based on number of faculty, not student body, because the students are getting it free now. So typically, you have to talk about pricing with the Microsoft folks, but I know uh, you're looking at a much cheaper price than we paid for site license previously. Businesses 
200 of the Fortune 500 co companies have already switched Office 365 because it was a lot cheaper for them to do. Entire states have done the initiative. The state of Virginia and the state of Texas have already switched all their government and state employees, including the colleges and schools, already over to Office 365. If you haven't heard about it, ask in those two states because it is available. Question back here? Okay, we live in a very rural area. Me too. A lot of our students have dial-up still. Correct. And some have no internet access. So no problem. All they would need to do is nowadays all devices are pretty much mobile. Come on campus one time at the beginning of the semester, click the link to put in Office 365. Used to be that Office 360, uh, the old offices would take hours to download. It's not so bad anymore. And they would, once a semester, need to take their computer to a place that has internet. So you do not need internet on a daily basis whatsoever uh, if you're saving locally. You know, there's no issues there. So you can use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, everything full strength without being connected to the internet. Any others? Well, guys, I want to, yes, one so, more. Sorry. Uh, yes. Two more. I, that's the best job interview I've ever seen. You're hired. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Thank you. Very kind. In and our office, last question? In Office 365, does the Mac support access? No, the dis Mac has never had the capabilities nor has Office ever moved into those capabilities to run Access. So I tell my students who are using a Mac, and a good 15, 20% of my students often are, I'll say for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, please, you can absolutely use the Mac. But Access is only at home on a PC. So for that one part, but I kind of see that as an odd positive. I want my students to kind of see both worlds. I think knowing Windows, and Mac connectivity is good in the environment today. So, and access probably will never be in a Mac, at least in the foreseeable future. I'm gonna, oh, one more question, thank you. Hi, Corinne, um, I'm the social media manager here at Cengage yeah. Learning, and I have a question that came in over Twitter. Great. From uh, W. Hatcher, who's watching us on the live stream, and wants to know, when using the touch screens, what about accessibility concerns with student, for students with visual challenges? Yeah, so with students with visual changes, challenges, obviously, we, there is a built-in voice recognition system. It also can be paralleled with items like JAWS. So actually, Windows 8 has the highest ADA standard rating than even Windows 7 did because of all the different levels of functionality, keyboard, monitor, voice recognition system. So really, we actually switched our ADA students who were um, challenge in many different ways over to Windows 8 before the rest of the campus because we saw so many positives in that sense. I can't thank you enough for being a part of today's Microsoft Mantra. David, thank you so much for getting us started and I thank you so much for a great day. Thank you.